The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. It's two o'clock, and we are about to start this webinar with Help Systems. I'm Turbin Appel from Common Europe, the organization behind this uh, the day's uh, webinar. Uh, I think there is 29 people are online already. We're going to be around 70 uh, that at least made the registration, which is a really good number. We're very happy for that. Uh, before handing over to, to uh, Carol and Steve, I would like to remind people about uh, the Common Europe di different activities, but especially the Common Europe Congress that we'll be are arranging in the summertime and the registration is open for that conference. So go ahead and already book your tickets and make your reservation for the great conference in Berlin. Okay, Carol and Steve, um, one hour is set and you, if you need a few more minutes for questions, that's okay. I know that you, Carol, will take care of the question box for questions and sometimes interrupt if that's an urgent question, where is it appropriate? Otherwise, you will uh, take the questions later, I guess. Uh, welcome, both of you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, today, this is Carol Whippery. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, if you do have questions during this presentation, please do not hesitate. Go ahead and ask those questions in the question box. If it's something that needs to be answered right away, then I will interrupt, but otherwise we will get to those at the end of this presentation. But it's my pleasure to be able to introduce my colleague, Steve Sisk. He has a great deal of technical expertise along a lot of different business lines, and he has done in-depth investigation into client ac access client solutions, and very specifically into how to deploy that securely. And so I have asked him to do this presentation today, and with that, I turn that over to you, Steve. <clears throat> Thank you, Carol. Welcome, everyone. Um, uh, we're going to uh, look into uh, the uh, secure deployment for Access Client Solutions. Um, well, let's see. How am I trying? To, okay, there we go. So, what we're going to talk today about today is going to be specific to Windows. Uh, uh, since that's where most of uh, Access Client Solutions is deployed, uh, many of these steps can be used in, in deployment to other platforms, uh, but we're focusing on Windows since that's the most uh, prevalent. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the install steps as related to secure deployment. Uh, so we won't be looking at every part of the installation, but those that are key to the uh, secure deployment of the product. And we're also going to be looking at the customizations and security for ACS so that uh, uh, those type areas are taken into consideration uh, when deploying the product. So a couple of things about Access Client Solutions is it's the newest member of the IBM I Access family. Um, and it replaces the current uh, uh, IBM I Access for Windows client that we all know and love and has been around for quite some time. Uh, the thing that's different about uh, Access Client Solutions uh, is unlike the, the IBM I Access for Windows is it runs in a Java runtime environment and it runs on most operating systems that support a Java runtime environment. So that provides us with some uh, a, good functionality, but it also provides us a couple of challenges when we go to deploy the product in the environment. Okay, so the considerations for secure deployment are, as I said, ACS uses a different technology and deployment approach than IBM I Access for Windows, and we'll talk about that deployment uh, approach here uh, shortly. Um, the other challenge we have is, is that the product is readily available for anyone to download that has an IBM I, uh, an IBM profile, uh, uh, profile on IBM's website, um, which uh, 
doesn't allow us to control the uh, the source of the product. Um, the component, additionally, the components that are selected during the install do not necessarily control uh, the functions that can be available to the user, and we'll talk about a little bit more about that uh, later. And that's on the desktop install specifically. Uh, fourthly, uh, the users can change the configuration file that controls uh, the uh, functions that are available to that user uh, very easily on their desktop and uh, provide themselves with more functions than uh, they might need. Um, and lastly, the product can be installed without a traditional Windows install. So, uh, for example, uh, the old uh, IBM iAccess for Windows product, it uses a Windows installer. Uh, and if you want wanted to control the the end user being able to install software, well, through the um, group policies on the desktop, you could do that. Uh, but uh, the ACS does not follow that same install um, paradigm. And uh, the, the the last thing is, um, and I forgot about this one, is that unlike IBM I Access for Windows, we have another deployment method uh, that we can leverage to deploy the ACS product in the um, in the on a network server versus installing it directly on the client. So that that provides us some uh, some. Uh, and usual challenges around security as well. <clears throat> so the differences between um, deployment differences between IBM I Access for Windows and ACS are uh, that the IBM I Access for Windows uses the traditional Windows installer. Um, ACS uses JavaScript as an installer or, and can be installed without running an installer at all. That sound, kind of sounds uh, uh, incorrect, but it can be installed without running the JavaScript installer. Uh, with IBM I Access for Windows, you select at, during the install which components you want the, the uh, desktop user to have available to them, um, and that's all that's installed on the desktop. With ACS, you can select uh, which components you want available to the user, but all components are installed. And if the user is uh, um, has the ability to edit the a properties file, which we will talk about a little bit later, uh, they can add or remove the components that are available to them. And the last thing is, is that the product for IBM I Access for Windows by default is located in the uh, programs files uh, directory, uh, whereas uh, ACS, if it's deployed in its default location, is actually installed in um, the user path, as in C colon backslash users backslash and then whatever the user name is. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Okay, so there are, um, for the purpose of this discussion, there are three deployment types. That's desktop, network, which we talked about those two, but also uh, access client solutions can be installed on a USB memory stick uh, and can be portable. But we're not going to cover the uh, USB install, we're going to focus on the desktop and the network install. Okay, so on the desktop, uh, the product and user files are in the desktop deployment, I'm sorry, the product and user specific files, uh, where, and when it, by user specific files, I mean uh, the files where the configuration information for the user is stored. Um, like, uh, for example, um, 
5250 session definitions or file transfer definitions, those types of things. And the default locations for those uh, for those uh, specific aspects of the product uh, is the product files are in uh, C colon backslash user backslash the Windows username IBM backslash client solutions and that's where the actual executable Java code resides on the user's desktop. The user files are the, those configuration uh, location for those configuration items that I was speaking of is in C colon backslash users, the Windows user's name, uh, the documents inside their documents folder, IBMI and iAccess client. So the locations for this product are a little bit different than IBMI access for Windows. Um, okay, so the desktop installation, uh, there's some uh, key aspects here um, is, uh, you want to run the the file the JavaScript here that I have mentioned, and that's where the uh, ACS image directory. That's where you have the uh, the when you unzip the uh, the zip file that you download from IBM's website. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that's what's meant by the ACS image directory. Uh, Windows Windows underscore application and install ACS XX, and the XX is the bitness of the Java that of the Java runtime environment that you have installed on the desktop, uh, be it 32 or 64 bit. So it's important when you do the install to uh, match the uh, bitness of the Java. Uh, the next, uh, you may get a security warning about the about the JavaScript running. That's normal. Go ahead and click Run, the Run option on the panel. And then respond. Uh, then you'll be prompted to uh, for which functions you want to enable for the user. So go ahead and respond to those. And uh, then uh, the next most important prompt, uh, the most important prompt next is do you want to uh, multiple users to share a common location of product files? And you want to be sure to, uh, with the desktop installation, to click no. Okay, so the security challenge around the desktop is uh, selecting the functions during that install does not prevent the user from accessing additional functions. Um, the ACS config.properties file is located in a user path, and that's located in the C colon uh, backslash user backslash win Windows username backslash IBM directory. And the ACS config.properties file is the, uh, is, the pl is the file that's used to control different aspects of how ACS runs on the desktop, uh, but most importantly, it's one of the places where um, um, the certain functions can be allowed or disallowed. But because of this is in a user path, uh, the user can implement, go in and modify that um, the parameters in the properties file and allow them to use more functions in the product than you than we might want. And uh, this graphic here is a uh, depicts the location of that properties file. And you'll see it's in the C colon users and I blurred out the username IBM client solutions and there's that uh, ACS config properties file. So as we look at more of these challenges around security, as I was always speaking about, the ACS config pro properties file can be edited. Uh, and with the default install, um, the parameters that are in the ACS config properties file is, controls the functions that are available to the, to the uh, desktop user. 
And here's a good example of, uh, I'm showing you an example here of what that looks like. Uh, and you can see on this bottom line here that I've excluded um, uh, uh, the key management, the operations console, uh, hardware console, and uh, the operations navigator uh, plug-in. But an end user, because it's in a user directory, uh, um, they can go in and just remove all of those restrictions, and now they have access to all of the functions within the product. So that's that's how easy it is for a desktop user to be able to uh, uh, provide themselves more access to product functions. And <clears throat> so restricting the product director, editing the ACS bundle jar uh, file can be circumvented. Um, so um, the the user, because the the product is downloadable with by anyone with an IBM ID, uh, the user can download the product, simply unzip it, and have the availab availability to all the functions that are in the product. So that uh, securing the product directory in the in the user path does not uh, is not a preventative measure. Uh, in restricting the functions that are allowed. Um, and again, because uh, ACS does not use a Windows installer, um, the uh, um, group policies don't necessarily come into play uh, when to prevent the end user from installing the product. And finally, the product is functional uh, when the zip file that uh, is comes down uh, from IBM that you can download it off the web. As soon as it's unzipped, uh, the the product is functional, so uh, it can be executed from the uh, contents of the zip file. <clears throat> So we, we need a better solution to uh, to address these security concerns so that we can limit the limit the the user to the functions that we really want them to have um, because some of the functions that are available in the product uh, and could be quite dangerous or a risk to our environment. Okay, uh, so the the best approach to uh, <clears throat> controlling the the available functions to end to users is through the restrictions function that's available uh, in the product. And uh, there are the restrictions function controls access to the ACS functions via the Windows registry. Uh, so we're not relying on the ACS property uh, config dot properties file to control the functions that are available, but we're um, relying on uh, reg Windows registry keys to identify the functions that should be available to the user. Um, the one prereq uh, prerequisite for using the restrictions function is that you have to have uh, administrator privileges on the desktop that you're um, that you're going to be um, building these registry controls on and the uh, restriction the restrictions that are in the registry are cumulative uh, for the, with the restrictions that are in the ACS config properties file. So if you have if you disallow some functions in the registry and you disallow other functions in the ACS config properties file, then both of those sets of uh, function restrictions will be in effect for the user. 
So accessing the uh, restrictions is uh, you want to start, first of all, you want to be logged on with administrator privileges. Then you want to start ACS uh, with administrator privileges. And you can do that by right clicking on the icon and, and say run as administrator. Um, and then you're going, when you get the ACS main panel up, you're going to say edit preferences. And this is a, a graphic of what that looks like, uh, which you probably, if you've been using the product, you've seen that previously, I'm sure. And then once we get to the preferences, there'll be a new tab that doesn't show up when you're not running as an, the product as an administrator. And you'll see here it's the restrictions tab. And you'll notice that there are, uh, there are many uh, selections here to the functions that you can restrict. Um, and these match the uh, same restrictions that you can apply through the ACS config.properties file. And uh, so you want to select the restrictions. Uh, uh, the, I'm sorry, you want to select the functions to restrict in this uh, restrictions file. Um, <clears throat> and here I have in this in this uh, graphic I have uh, restricted everything but Telnet or 5250 emulation. Uh, once you uh, once you uh, uh, select the functions you want to restrict, uh, then you want to be sure to click OK or apply. That's very important uh, that you do that before the next step. Then the next step is on this um, previous, on the previous slide, I'm sorry here, you'll notice there's an, this export uh, dot reg file. Uh, here in this area and uh, once you click OK then on the next slide we're going to uh, run the export to reg file and you can call the reg file whatever you like but uh, important here is you'll notice that the only uh, function with a that is allowed which was the 5250 or telnet has a U beside of it and that uh, the R is restricted and the U is for use. Uh, so uh, you can, after you create this registry file and you uh, find that you might have made a mistake, you can go into the registry file and change the, the R values for R and U to allow or disallow more functions. Okay, and then uh, so once you have that. Uh, once once you have that registry file, <clears throat> you can um, send the uh, you can send that registry file. My apologies. You you can send this registry file um, down to the desktop with your install, and after you run the install on the client, then you would run this registry file. And that's going to set all of your permissions as to what functions are available to the, a particular user. Um, if you're thinking about deploying uh, SSL for your connectivity for ACS, then there is a way to uh, deploy a standardized SSL key store. Uh, so. And the advantages of that standardized SSL key store is it avoids the user having to interact with the uh, acceptance of the SSL or uh, certificate when the first connection is made. Um, and uh, certificates can be preloaded <clears throat> into the ACS SSL key store, and that key store file is CA certs and that is in the um, user configuration portion of the of the pro of the install um, and the exact location is here is in uh, the uh, user directory documents IBM IBM access 
I access client private, and then the Windows username. Um, so if if uh, you as an administrator are on your desktop and you have all of the correct uh, certificates loaded in the ACS certificate key store, whenever you deploy your desktop cl the client on your target si on the target client system, um, you can uh, place the CA certs file from your desktop into the client desktop in the, in the correct location, and they will have all the certificates that they need to establish SSL connectivity uh, for any of the functions that are within the ACS client. And again, just a reminder, just like with the registry, running the registry file, uh, you want to be sure to install the CA certs file after you do the the initial install for um, Access Client Solutions. All right, so the desktop deployment summary is uh, use, the, use the registry file to restrict functions that are available to your desktop users. And um, it, that, and that will, those restrictions are in effect even if the user goes into the ACS config.properties file, as we sh illustrated in the previous slide, and removes all of the restrictions uh, that are um, it defined in the ACS config.properties file. Uh, next is you want to. Uh, build a dot reg a registry file for each combination of functions that you want uh, users to have in your environment so for example uh, you may have a set of users that um, just need telnet or you would build a registry file that restricts everything but telnet uh, for another one for another set of users you may need telnet and uh, the ability to look at uh, school files from ACS. You build another registry file for those users and deploy the registry file that's appropriate for the for the functions that the user um, needs on a particular desktop. Then uh, then install the ACS uh, install ACS on the desktop. That's next. Once you have your registry file built. <clears throat> execute the registry file after the install and then deploy the standardized SSL key store um, and that will set your environment up so that you have SSL uh, in, uh, ready for the user on the desktop and the functions that are available to the user restricted. We have any, I'll pause there for a moment. Carol, do we have any questions that I need to address? No, you must be explaining things so well. We have had no questions asked. So if anybody okay. has any questions, type them in. Okay, okay. Um, then we'll move on to network deployment. Um, and this is a, um, a, a new capability within um, ACS and um, allows us to minimize the, the location, the number of locations where the product has to be updated um, and uh, is very attractive in, in that uh, aspect. So the diff so in the net the network deployment scenario, the product and the user specific files reside on a file server. And the deployment approach differs from the desktop approach, um, as you might imagine deploying on a file server. Uh, the network, uh, and b before we go into this, uh, using network ACS images uh, is not uh, recommended for administrators of the um, IBMI systems. Uh, the recommendation is for uh, the administrators to continue to use a desktop deployed 
uh, ACS. All right. That's <laughs> Next. And that's because if the file server were to go or to uh, were to not be available, then that could impede the ability of the administrators to get to the system. So to ensure that the uh, uh, administrators have a, uh, can access the system at any time, that's the reason we recommend to continue to use the client uh, client install. Um, so, um, for the network uh, deployment, uh, you you hear me uh, refer reference a term called images, um, and an image is a distinct ACS installation that's created for a combination of allowable functions. So, uh, for example, um, if I just need 5250. Then I'm going to create an image that just has 5250 in it. That's all the capabilities that it has in the uh, in the image. And then if I have a if I have another um, set of users that need 5250 data transfer and printer output, then I'm going to create an image with those functions available. And then yet thirdly, if I have some users that need access to the IFS and to run SQL scripts, then I'm going to create uh, another image that has those five functions available. And I'm going to make sure that the user is accessing on the file server is only accessing the image uh, that has the functions in it that that uh, user needs. Okay, the, the the overview of the network installation from a security perspective is uh, to copy the contents of the ACS uh, .zip file to the directory on the file server where the image will be contained. Um, <coughs> pardon me. And then uh, run the following script uh, again, selecting the appropriate bitness for the Java runtime environment that's uh, going to be on the desktop that's uh, going to uh, access this particular image that we're building. Uh, the important thing you want to ensure is that you um, use the slash admin config parameter um, after the install JavaScript. Um, because that's going to ask you some additional questions and will help you in building the image. Um, you're going to go through the same process as that we uh, mentioned before in the desktop install, uh, but the key uh, parameter or prompt that you're going to see is do you want multiple users to share? A common location of product files, and in this case, uh, you want to select yes. And then, as you go through the, uh, then you want to choose the functions that you want to include in this image. And if you, if the product, uh, sh then the the next uh, prompt you'll get is, do you want uh, shortcuts for the product to appear on the desktop, and um, I would we recommend you say yes there, uh, because when the user installs uh, or the or the the install process runs on the client, um, then they'll have icons to be able to access the ACS uh, cl uh, product on the on the file server. Okay, <clears throat> pardon me. All right, so once you get this image in, built on the file server, <clears throat> when you get ready to deploy on the desktop, um, you're going to run this same install in, uh, this same install script uh, that you use to, my apologies, 
uh, that you used to build the image on the desktop on this file server. Um, however, the important thing is is that the product is not installed on the desktop. Uh, there, the only thing that occurs when you run the install um, on the desktop is <clears throat> it places the icons on on the uh, on the desktop as well as uh, creates a couple of directories in the user uh, in the documents folder directory that we mentioned before uh, that holds some configuration information. One of those being um, that I'll point out. One of those being um, that if you choose to cache the the product on the desktop, which we recommend for performance reasons, uh, that uh, those uh, directory that are created during the install uh, house that um, cache. Okay, <clears throat> so controlling functions in the uh, um, on the network install is done a little bit differently. We do use the exclusion property in the ACS config properties file. Um, and those uh, functions are listed here. You can also find them in the getting started documentation for the product. So you can use these individual functions to restrict uh, certain functions in the ACS config properties file, or uh, you could use these functions gr function groups. Uh, that have been provided, and you can um, use a mixture of both or of both of those groups and the individual functions if you like. Okay, so let's talk about the a little bit more detail about the <clears throat> location of user files on the file server and the reasons for why. With the structure of those uh, directory locations on the file server. So first of all, um, each user on the uh, um, each user is given a directory on the file server to to house their uh, configuration information, like. Um, uh, 5250 emulation session definitions, file transfer definitions, and those types of things. Um, and uh, the reason that they're given their individual directories is to prevent conflicts uh, because using one, two, two or more users using the same directory uh, would cause conflicts with the product. Okay. Keep in mind this this directory is not created by the product install. So the directory where the configuration items uh, are going to be held has to be created manually. The location of the directory um, for the image is indicated by the um, ACS base directory property in the excuse me in the um, ACS config properties file, and the directory for each user, uh, as I mentioned, should be created prior to the first use of ACS by the end user. So a good time to do that. Is to create these directories, uh, which are based which are based on the user's Windows uh, name uh, ahead of the deployment of ACS. That's a good time to do that, so that they're ready for the user when uh, they the install occurs. And here are the two options that are available for the location of the user files. Um, the first location uh, can be in the product directory 
uh, where Access Client Solutions is, uh, where the image is located. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, and uh, this this particular um, directive here, uh, um, I keep doing that. I apologies. Uh, puts the uh, configuration directory where all of these user configuration subdirectories are located in the same directory structure as the as the product image. The second option is um, <clears throat> the uh, user directories can be uh, on any in any directory off of the root. Um, and you, the question question that may come to mind is, well, why would you want to use one versus the other? Uh, so if you have a single image on your file server, then the product directory uh, implementation, that's a good option. If you're gonna have multiple images on your file server and you want uh, all of, all of the user directories for all of those users to be in the same location, uh, then you can use the the root option and in each one of the images, and that will place all of your uh, user directories in one location on your file server versus having to go look in each one of the uh, product, uh, the install image locations. Okay, so the important part of the file server uh, deployment is uh, the directories and the files must be secured uh, to allow execution of the product, but not allow the end user to modify the configuration. <clears throat> so um, here in this table are the recommended uh, security for each one of the directories that we were speaking of. So the the base ACS product directory, and that's the directory where the uh, ACS bundle dot jar, which that's the code that gets executed, as well as the ACS config dot properties file. We re recommend that that is set to read and execute on the file server, um, and the directories and files in the ACS product directory are set to uh, read and execute, as well as the user configuration directory, whether it's in the product directory or off of the root directory, it doesn't matter. You want to set that directory to read and execute. And then finally, the directory for the user, uh, that directory that contains the user uh, configuration files, which are again is one for each user. You want to set that so it's public exclude or public has no access to it, and the user has read, write, and execute to their own directory. And what this does is it prevents the user from changing the contents of the ACS bundle.jar executable file as well as prevents them from changing the ACS config dot properties file um, where you set the restrictions for the functions that are available in that particular image. So here's uh, so where's some examples of the directories uh, that are in that are in the product or configuration and the product directory. So you'll see um, in this particular implementation, I've chosen to place the config directory um, in with the product directory. And you can call the config directory anything you'd like. Uh, the name is not uh, uh, important, whatever makes uh, the most sense to you. I just called it config directory for the purpose of illustration. And you'll and this is the directory that we're indicating um, that should be uh, the, the user should only be able to read, read and execute out of this directory. 
And then here is inside the config directory that um, that we have over here in in the first illustration. Um, you'll notice that um, I have several uh, user configuration directories of different users, and it's at this user inside of the um, user directory you have the IBM and the three IXS client uh, directories, and it's at this user directory we're uh, suggesting to make public where public cannot get to that directory but only the user has read write and execute okay uh, as with the as with the uh, um, desktop deployment you may want to deploy uh, enable SSL for the the server deployment um, and again here the eliminates the need for to maintain an SSL key store in each one each user configuration directory um, and you can uh, place the CA search file that you want everyone to use and uh, in fact you could uh, if you want to use the same CA search file across multiple uh, images you can place that CA search file in one location and um, use. Uh, um, I'm sorry. You you can place it. Uh, my apologies. You can place the the um, image, the C search file in the same location in the uh, in those user configuration files on the server as you did on the on the desktop. Another way you can do that, and I got a little ahead of myself, my apologies, is that you can use it across images, um, if you like, uh, by using the uh, uh, iaccess.cert file property in the ACS config properties file and point to the location of where you want your common CA search file. So you have two options there uh, when deploying the CA search file. E either directly in the user's configuration directory or you can put it in one location and use that for a one or more images by using the property uh, the property in the ACS config.properties file. And Steve? Uh, yes. One of the reasons you might want to do this, if you send out this key store with the CA search, right, that you're using for your encrypted session, then the users won't get prompted, right, that they, that Correct. the certificate isn't recognized. So Correct. this is an yes. easy way to avoid users getting error messages, as well as if you have to push out a new CA certificate, like if you got a, a, one was expiring or you decided to use one with stronger encryption, this is a way to push that out. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. That's correct. And and that is the nice thing about using the network deployment and using the the iaccess.c cert file property is that you can have one cert file to update for all of the images and all of the users that um, are using the network uh, of the file network file server deployment. So instead of having to update it and, you know, if you got 500 users 500 times, you can just update it once. Perfect. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes, yeah, thank you. You bet. So the network deployment summary is um, create the ACS image, image for the combination of functions that you want the set of users to be able to uh, use. <clears throat> Uh, create the user configuration directories for the users that are going to be uh, using that uh, image. And then secure the ACS files and directories as we dis discussed in a previous slide. And then add the following properties to the file. Uh, the location of the configuration directory, we spoke about that. 
the location of the common SSL key store file. Um, and that can be, uh, as we just spoke, it can be in each user's configuration directory, or you can have one central uh, location for the SSL key store. One thing I want to, uh, well, let me, let me just mention one other thing here. Uh, one other thing that you can do uh, to, um, and we spoke about the uh, registry, controlling ACS with the registry. Even on the network deployment, you can, uh, when you do the install on the client, and it's not really an install, it just creates the icons and some work areas for the, for the, on the desktop. You can also uh, install the registry file uh, that has the functions that you want to allow in the re uh, for this network file, uh, network deployment, and that's an added measure uh, that will prevent the user from exercising functions that you don't want them to have um, if they were perchance to download the product to their desktop, or if they were able to access a network. Uh, image that had more function in it than you would want them to have. So that's a uh, another that's a secondary measure that you can take. It's not necessary, but uh, certainly one that you might consider doing as well. It, it's not doesn't add that much more time to the uh, the install on the desktop for the network images, but. Uh, something that can be an added measure for security. So Steve, this uh, kind of brings up a, a question that we had. Um, and their question was, so even if you don't intend to use ACS as an IBMI shop, a good practice mm -hmm. would be to send out that registry, basically to make sure that if somebody actually who was clever and knew about ACS, even though it wasn't actually used within the organization, um, they could download it and zip it and unzip it and use it. So best practice, mm -hmm. even if you don't use ACS by default, would be to send out a registry file to prevent its use, basically. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Good question. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was. Okay, we're going to talk just a couple of minutes here about application administration. And this is in, uh, this is the application administration that's in um, uh, Navigator, either the desktop or the uh, web-based version, uh, that's used to control some functions related to um, uh, ACS. Okay. So it's important to know that ACS uses the same IBMI interfaces as the previous IBMI access for Windows. So as you think about your deployment, you want to keep that in mind. Um, so it allows controlling some ACS functions from IBMI itself. Uh, so for example, the access to database functions, um, you can restrict Telnet, et cetera, from, for a particular user profile. Um, you can configure it through uh, Navigator for I, or you can use the work function usage command to uh, modify the configuration as well. But most people use Navigator because it's a little bit easier. Um, and if you have existing application administration restrictions, when you deploy uh, ACS uh, to those users that you have restrictions, those restrictions will still be in place. So that's the key thing to remember, uh, that uh, when you install ACS, that does not um, negate the restrictions that you have applied in ACS. And here are the, some of the functions in ACS that you can restrict. Uh, 
you can, uh, th this list here is the function here on the left and the area within um, the, within Navigator where you would active, uh, uh, where you would uh, change the, uh, to allow or disallow the function. So uh, printer output, integrated file system, uh, that's special because uh, the integrated file system uh, is a restriction by file system. So by root or by QDLS or QOpenSys, you can restrict users from getting to one or all of those uh, those file systems in the hi hierarchical file system of IBM I. The rest of these functions are basically an on or off. You either allow or disallow it for the user. Uh, and as I mentioned, database tasks, 5050 emulation, and data transfer. Um, <clears throat> on this page here, I'll leave this for you to review at your leisure, but this is all reference information where information for this presentation would gathered, uh, was gathered. <clears throat> Um, I will point out that there is a uh, um, a webinar uh, here at this last bullet on the page uh, that talks about ACS and deploying SSL uh, in detail, um, and that's a very good webinar uh, if you're interested in, in uh, understanding more about um, more about that process. So that's all I have for today. And Carol, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about the uh, talk about uh, the remainder of the slides. Okay, thanks, Steve. Um, Help Systems, of course, has uh, many types of software solutions, and we do try to do a solution-based approach, whether it's vulnerability assessments, antivirus, uh, working with compliance and audit. We have full encryption. Uh, solutions or managed file transfer solutions. So we have a number of software solutions that we can offer. Um, we also have, if you'll go on to the next slide, we also have a number of security services that we provide, um, and that's uh, the area that Steve and I both work in at Help Systems. Uh, we have representatives out of the UK as well, so it's not like uh, if you want something done that you have to work with. One of us in the States, we actually have people in the EU as well. So we usually start with a risk assessment to find out uh, where all the issues are, and we uh, go on from there. So uh, let's see, we have just a couple of uh, minutes left. Again, if you have any questions, just go ahead and type them in the Q&A box. You will get a follow-up email. And that will contain a link to the recording of this uh, webinar, as well as uh, a copy of the handouts if you hadn't already downloaded them from GoToMeeting. So I think that we have answered all of the questions. Um, let's see. I think so. And there was a question about the download, but he found it. So for everyone. He did find the download, yep. Yeah, it's yep. available, I think, down to the right for you guys. I, for me, it's at least uh, down Great. to the right in the tool. So okay. I think that we have answered all of the rest of the questions. I so think so, too. See. Thank you very much, both of you. Yep. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Help Systems, for supporting the community, as you do very well, as always. Uh, you're okay. very welcome. We're happy to do it. Thank you very much for today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.